In a world where the security of a company depends on the creative ability of a few, the data must be protected. Imagine two teams vying for control of the network, the system, the data. Meet the blue team, a simple group of IT professionals in a complicated world of technology. But for the next hour, in one heart-stopping moment, quite possibly heroes. They've planned, discussed, prepared. Prepared? Nothing could ever prepare you for what awaits you today. The red team. Action. Adventure. Romance. They might get, look all so easy and so cool. Oh yeah. Now you may call my talk entertaining, but for the few people who call themselves hackers, it's going to be the white knuckle thrill ride of the year. For some, it will be an hour of unending suspense and terror. But for others, a heartwarming affirmation of the can-do American spirit inside of us all. Featuring all your favorite Hackerville entities. City Hall, the library, the school, the power plant, and Zulu Manufacturing. Let's go. So, a little bit about me. I have 17 years experience in IT and security. I know some uh, Windows, some Mac, a little bit of Linux. A little bit about uh, Cisco. A little bit about security. Oh yeah, those things too. So let's talk about the uh, red team, blue team. So this will be a joint exercise, two disparate teams, isolated data center for the exercise. So we're completely cut off from the outside world. We have Kali Linux available to us as a toolkit. And we have a mock city community environment in which to conduct this attack in. So Hackmeville, we'll call this place. There's a city hall, just like any city would have a good city hall. There's a police department, power station, a school, library, and Zulu Manufacturing, a private entity. So a little bit about Zulu. Um, we managed to infect 10 Windows 7 workstations and we controlled them with ProRat. It's black market remote control software. That was kind of our in to the company. They run on a Windows domain. They have financial records on their domain controller. And they have a Linux web server. And they push FTP data over to City Hall, which is mainly tax info. So Zulu found out that they were hacked because they discovered some of these workstations infected with ProRap. And they said, uh-oh, got a problem here. And then they found out their IT admin account got compromised. So they knew they were in trouble. They had to call somebody. Who do you call? <laughs> No, you don't call Ghostbusters. You call the real professionals. Call the blue team. So they're called in after City Hall received this virus that was somehow uploaded via FTP from Zulu. Oops. Outsiders from Zulu uh, came in trying to do some incident response to stop the infection from spreading. And they tried to attempt to, to locate the source. So they knew that there was an infection going on at Zulu. So they do like any blue team member would. They respond to it. They try to collect evidence. Um, they had some members there, the blue team in the bottom right, um, that all started looking at all the stuff on there. They were um, actually members of the Michigan Cyber Civilian Corps. And, and this is all just a mock exercise, you know. But a really great exercise for them. They came in and started looking at some stuff. And they had some varying experience. They're all volunteer members. Um, some of them were certified uh, ethical, ethical hackers, certified forensic analysts. Um, whole bunch of acronyms behind their name. Other ones were just co aspiring college students just interested to know what's going on. Uh, Zulu actually called them up and said, hey, we think we've been hacked. Can you help us? Yeah. Well, well, well the red team, the, the red team did some hacking. Um, and then basically we got a little careless and our virus kind of made it over to City Hall and City Hall called back Zulu and Zulu's like, oh, we're hacked, what? <laughs> City Hall's like, hey, you better get your stuff together because you FTP stuff over to us, you know, don't infect us. So that's kind of when they called in for the blue team to give them a hand. 
So the red team, a little bit about the uh, the bad guys in this event. That's that's them up there. So they had some objectives to follow, basically to try to steal data, disrupt stuff when they think they they've been discovered, keep the blue team busy, that type of stuff. We had kind of a similar composition of members here. Some people were really experienced in the security world. Some people were college students, wanted to know more about it. Um, some people were like, yeah, I, I run the network at my company. Um, um, hack, what, what's that, you know? Yeah, we kind of taught them as they stuff went along. Um, coordination, um, we didn't really meet until the event happened, so we just kind of like sat down and like, uh, okay, you're good at this, you do that, you're good at that, you just do that, and and then we'll all get together and talk and share information every half an hour, find anything new, any good data. So our main objective in this exercise was to maintain access. So we had access into Zulu with these infected workstations. We had to maintain that access. If the blue team found out about us, our access was gone. Secondary objective was to exfiltrate some additional data. Any data, anything we could find in there that was worthy. Another secondary objective was to get control of the power grid, and then we'll shut down Zulu. So we'll just kill power to the whole building. We'll just disrupt them, cause a bunch of havoc. You know, the blue team can't protect anything if we shut them down, if we cut their power. So some of our tactics that we used during this, um, we used some IT forensics tools to discover some network resources, locate some targets, your basic end map. Use some more IT forensic tools to scan each target and determine possible exploits to run against each target. Um, in Cali, I mean, there's a whole collection of tools in there, a giant tool set, we used uh, Metasploit, you name it. Um, scanned everything that we found on there, um, found a whole bunch of vulnerabilities, and then we leveraged those exploits to gain access to the targets. And then we laid low, gathered some information, exfiltrated some more data. Um, and, and, the, and the whole thing about this, you know, you got a city hall, you got a police station, you got a power station, you got a school. You got all this kind of stuff. They're all targets too. But yeah, our primary is Zulu, but we hack the school. We launch our attack from the school. Zulu's sitting there going, what's the school doing attacking us? I don't know. Get into City Hall. Break into City Hall. Hey, we got all their tax info. Okay, let's attack City Hall. Let's attack Zulu from City Hall. Because Zulu ain't going to block City Hall. They got to send all their tax data to them. They can't block them in a firewall. Let's use that, attack them back that way. So we create a lot of noise, headaches for our blue team friends to keep them busy from trying to remove our access. We kept them busy running around, you know, filling up their web server logs, bringing down their website with 20,000 requests a second, just because we could. So the blue team, they tried to secure and lock down the network as quickly as possible without interrupting access to their services. So they had a website, they had FTP data, they had to go outside, they couldn't just shut down their domain controller. Um, while the attack passed, so they had to keep all these services up and running. So we started trying to take down those services. Yeah, our, our goal was to get more data out, but hey, if we can take down their web server, they have to scramble to get it up and running. They're not going to be busy trying to block us. So then we did, had to, they had to determine which services were legitimate so they didn't accidentally take down their customer, so in this case, City Hall. Um, they also had to analyze all their log files for some historical evidence and continuously monitor them for any future malicious events, any other attacks that we'd be conducting against them. That kept them busy, too, because not all of them knew how to read log files, which is awesome when you're filling them up with 20,000 requests a second. Yeah, analyze these log files for the last, you know, five minutes. That'll keep you busy. They also had to gather and secure some evidence for later prosecution. So every single attack that we made against them, that was logged. So good practices for the blue team. Minimize their company's external facing presence to the internet, which they did a fairly good job of. I mean, they only had a couple things exposed, which we hacked them. Uh, don't forget about the cloud, it's vulnerable too. I mean, if they had anything out in the cloud, like on Amazon or whatever, yeah, we can hack that too. Doesn't matter where it's at. Got to have good communication internally and externally, before, during, and after the cyber incidents. So internally. So blue team people have to talk to people at Zulu saying, hey, what's going on? What's normal here? What, what services do you need to provide for your customers? Um, they need to communicate externally. So City Hall calls up and says, hey, we think you've been hacked. And what does Zulu say? 
Um, hold on, let me check. <laughs> During the attack, because this went on for eh, probably five or six hours, so they got to constantly talk about, hey, we're seeing a new attack over here, a new attack over there. And then after, well, who's to say the attack's over? <laughs> Is it really? No. So how the exercise unfolded. So the night before, the red team was actually given access into Zulu. So we kind of planted our little stuff and scanned the network, poked around a little bit. Didn't really do anything too nefarious, but we just kind of verified that, oh, yeah, we got access. So the morning of, we come on in, blue team, for the first time, gets to see their system that they're trying to defend. And they're told that they've been hacked. They don't know how, but they're told that they've been compromised. So they're trying to figure stuff out. They're trying to figure out what's normal, where everything's at. And we start teaching our people, okay, here's the info that we know. Here's what you need to hack. So they start poking and prodding away at stuff. Taught a few people who, who to, how to do uh, denial of service attacks, brought down the web server. Tell you, that guy was really proud. Never done a hack before in his life. He said, yeah, just open up this little tool. Just send a thousand requests a second to their web server. Oh, okay. Uh, open up that tool about ten more times. <laughs> just keep going. He goes, okay, I'm doing that. I said, try to go to their website. It's not responding. Good job. Keep him busy. Also looks for some exploits. Um, didn't really find any good exploits against Zulu itself, but we found lots of great exploits against school and city hall and all the other kind of stuff. And just Kept running them until we got, got access. Exfiltrated some data, um, got some tax info from them, um, tax inf information from customers, uh, order numbers, amounts, and yeah, whatever, some data. Um, ProRat was on 10 of those boxes inside of Zulu. We really didn't have a whole lot of experience with ProRat, and every single time we tried to use it, it kind of flagged it on the Blue Team's end, and they kind of found each box, so we just said, nah, forget about it. Um, and the experience level of the team members. I mean, there were people that were entry level. There were people that were experienced in there. I mean, it's just a great experience um, for everyone. And, I mean, it just showed you that you don't have to be an expert in hacking in order to be able to be successful on a team. So anything that we saw, we scanned it, we analyzed it, then we attacked it, even if it wasn't known what it was. So we were told about City Hall, the police station, the library, the school, Zulu. We found some other stuff, and we're like, oh, what's this? It doesn't really look like any of these. Yeah, attack it. Try to get in. Let's find out. You know, this isn't a lockdown data center. We're separate from the Internet. You know, whatever we can see, we hack. Okay. So we compromised some other entities in order to attack Zulu. So, like I said, Zulu won't block City Hall. We accidentally found the scoring system for the exercise. Compromise that, too, because that's always fun. Scoreboard says you're winning. We just made it, you know, hey, we're winning all the time. So what happened to Zulu? Well, we shut down power to the entire city. Well, that shut down Zulu. Uh, no jobs, economic downfall to the city, mass chaos, panic in the streets. We had financial data for over 400,000 records from Zulu, personally identifiable information. Uh, we could swarm Zulu with enough network traffic to effectively shut them down, uh, even if they did manage to get power back, which they couldn't. It was out of their control because we controlled the power system. So some lessons learned. Uh, good communication. I think I said that before, internally and externally. Um, the blue team communicated fairly well. Um, some of them saw log entries. They didn't know what they were, so they ignored them. It was us. Oops. I, I mean, yes. Firewall everything and allow only what is needed. We found a couple holes. Compromised the school with a zero day on a 2003 server. Really? Monitor your firewall logs. Have a good baseline. Know what your triggers are and what is abnormal or an attack. So we're sitting there just pinging away at them like crazy with stuff, scanning everything. Did they ever look at that and say, oh, yeah, hey, maybe that's them attacking. Maybe we should block them. No. They didn't look at the logs. They didn't see us scanning every single port. They didn't know it was us coming in. Know where your data's at. Now, I say the scoreboard system. You say, well, yeah, the data's at the scoreboard system. Oh, that's just the scoreboard system. Well, when we hacked into it, 
we found some more data on the scoreboard system that wasn't really part of the exercise, but it was. It happened to be, remember this is a mock environment that's set up, it happened to be a password file for every single password, every single system in the environment. Bonus. <laughs> so um, we had a little bit of fun. So where do you go from here? Well, you can run and hide. Maybe the red team will go away eventually. Or you can just ignore them. You know, I mean, they're just pinging away on the outside. You know, they're not in, right? Or you can unplug, which is kind of like run and hide, you know. The company won't be able to function, but you could call somebody who cares. Not Ghostbusters, maybe, you know. Or you could have a security staff to respond. Yeah, you can attack the attackers, you know. I can't say for any legal ramifications, you know. So, there's this cybersecurity framework that's put out by NIST. And it talks about identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover, which is a really good framework if you don't have any good information security policy out there. And this will really help you to identify your assets, your business environment, what governance might apply to you, whether it's PCI or HIPAA or SOX. Do a risk assessment, figure out where your risks are at, and then come up with a strategy on how you're going to manage those risks. This is all in the planning part of this. Then you get into protecting it, access control. Okay, so you've identified where your assets are. How do you protect them? Who needs access to them? Does the person out on the manufacturing floor really need access to the accounting data? Probably not. Does the person in HR really need access to the IT administration folder? Probably not. Does the person in payroll need um, access to the manufacturing line? No. Educate your staff. Train them. Show them what is normal what isn't normal. Tell them about the attacks. Tell them about the suspicious phone calls that may call up asking for your username and password. That isn't right. Don't click on this. Here's what happens if you do. This is not normal. This is when you need to call somebody. Data security goes in line with risk management. You know where your risks are, how to manage them, secure your data. Write some security policies. Maintenance. So you bring your systems down, you do your updates, right? Some people do. Some people don't. Plan it. Do it. That's protecting your data. Get some protective technologies like a firewall, intrusion detection system, intrusion prevention system, antivirus, anti-malware, and follow those good practices. Oh yeah, there they are again. Same ones, third time. They're really good practices. So baseline. You know what your firewalls look like on a normal day. You know what your IDS and IPS looks like on a normal day. Know what your content filter looks like on a normal day. Same thing for your VPN remote access logs. Who's on VPN? Who should be on VPN? Should the person that's always in the office 24-7 be on VPN? Like ever? No. Know what your system logs look like on a normal day. Is it normal to have 20 errors a minute? Privilege use. It's that little security log file that always fills up. Who should be using the privileges? Who shouldn't be? Who should be in local admin? Who shouldn't be? Know what abnormal activity is. So going back to baselining. Know what your baseline is. Anything that's not in the baseline is abnormal. Is it an attack? Is it isolated? Is it just one person attacking you? Or is it a coordinated attack? Again, go back to your logs. Look at it. Is this normal? Is this slightly above normal? Is this, whoa, way out of scope? Is this so specific that Wow, they shouldn't even have no idea what's going on. And who is it? When did they attack? Record all this stuff. This is how you respond to an incident. So you got an attack, you're recording all this information, now you got to respond. you got to do something. Plan your response. There's communications again. you got to talk to your people say, hey, we got something going on here. Here's what we're going to do. Analysis. Analyze this. Figure out what's going on. Figure out what you need to do, what your next steps are. Mitigate the threat, get them out, clean up the environment, and then go back and improve upon it. 
okay, we did this this time. How effective was it? How can we improve upon this next time? And then recover from that. So, okay, we got the attack out, right? Well, are we back to 100% business now? Or are we still kind of, oh, well, we got to re-image that workstation. We got to do this and we, we got to tweak this setting. Okay. Plan for that. Plan for that little bit of downtime you're going to have afterwards to reevaluate everything and say, yes, we are now 100% recovered. And again, look at improvements for this. What can you do better next time? And again, communicate. Communicate this back up to the chain, to the other people that maybe started out with the incident response. So some takeaways. If you don't have an information security policy, get one. Write your own. I mean, there's plenty of examples out there. Just Google it. Have a disaster recovery plan, because you know you're going to probably use it if they take control, if they pwn you. Better be a part of your DRP plan, because without your systems, I mean, you're down. That is a disaster. Have a continuity of operations plan. So maybe it ain't quite a disaster yet, but we really can't function. Well, is it enough to declare a disaster? Well, probably not, but how do we get past this? Maybe they, they took out our main firewall. Okay, we can't get past that. How do we continue to operate beyond that? And know who to call and when. So you may know you need to call somebody. Well, we think we're being attacked. Do we call somebody yet? Um, you know, maybe, maybe we call an analyst, a consultant. Do we call the police? I mean, or do we wait a little bit more than we call somebody? Or know this ahead of time. So here's some resources. Um, the Michigan Intelligence Operations Center, their address is at the top there. They're a great resource um, for, say, like you get an attack or something, you see something weird. Feel free to reach out to them and say, hey, we saw something weird. You know, maybe we got this weird attack and we weren't really sure what it was. Feel free to just give them a call, shoot them an email, tell them about that. Um, they keep all the information confidential. Don't need to worry about that type of stuff. Um, also, the West Michigan Cybersecurity Consortium. We're here locally. We have a LinkedIn page. We also have a booth out in the vendor area. Um, free local group talks about um, cybersecurity incidents, that type of stuff. Department of Homeland Security has a Stop, Think, Connect campaign going on. Uh, visit that website for a lot more resources. Great for community, for businesses. The NIST Cyber Framework is right there. And then there's actually a Stop, Think, Connect video. It's like six minutes long. I won't play it for you guys, but it's out there on YouTube. If you guys uh, need any of these links, stop by. Let me know. If you guys, have any questions about red team, blue team, cybersecurity incidents? Is anyone awake out there? <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. it was actually, it was hosted in a VMware virtual environment, so all the stuff was kind of virtualized in that. Um, there were a couple of software firewalls in there that we kind of looked at. We didn't really go ahead and go after them, we just kind of looked for the existing holes and that type of stuff. We didn't really need to, they had enough openings already with some of the systems, and once we found the password file, it's just like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> all right, thank you.